Good evening, and welcome to the Coach Derrick Barrows Show. I am your host, Justin Robinson, and once again, I'm sitting here with Coach Derrick Barrows himself. How you doing, Coach? Good, good. good. All right. Um, there were some concerns about your defense being young and relatively new. Mm -hmm. um, however, the defense held Morehouse to 10 points until the fourth quarter. Uh, how impressed were you with their performance in the first three quarters, and what happened in that last quarter? Well, um, uh, to answer your your uh, question uh, I was I was very pleased with the way the defense actually played the whole game uh, I thought they uh, I thought they played hard I thought they played well uh, it's just we just played too many snaps on defense and uh, I think they got a little tired and uh, and uh, we uh, we had a, a fumble punt uh, deep down in our uh, inside our 20 uh, yard line so it was a number of uh, contributing factors, but I was, I was very pleased uh, about the way the defense played, actually. Uh, do you think the performance will be a good growing experience for the defense? I, I do, I do, because you're right. The whole season I have been concerned about uh, starting uh, nine or ten new defensive players. Right. And, uh, but I was, proud, I, was, I was proud of all the kids. Now, you know, uh, I wish we had a... Uh, won the game, but I, I'm still proud of all the kids. They played uh, very hard. Um, did, did the did the change at quarterback for Morehouse have an effect on your defense, or did it seem to spark their offense? I no. I'm, the change at quarterback had nothing to do with uh, nothing to do with anything. I don't I don't know if no to answer your question. <laughs> I didn't even know how to answer that one. <laughs> Um, both of you guys uh, had a combined seven foot thirty three on third down. Um, is that a testament on how well the defenses were playing? Absolutely. Um, whenever you can get off the field on third down, that's a great thing. And uh, they held us to uh, a negative uh, yards rushing, which is something that I thought that they wouldn't or couldn't do. And um, and that was the difference in the game. Uh, do do you feel the 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 offensive struggles for both teams? No, I don't. I don't feel that their offense struggled at all. I think uh, you know uh, it was a hard fought uh, uh, offense and defensive game between our defense and their offense. Uh, I thought their defense played uh, outstanding. Uh, so uh, I don't. I don't necessarily think that they struggled. They moved the ball on us, but we just kind of we bent, but we didn't break. Uh, we can't play kind of a bend but don't break defense, but I don't think their offense struggled at all. Um, both, both teams had a combined 20 penalties for 226 yards. Uh, was this due to the lack of focus, frustration, or sloppy play? Um, it was on, on our part, it was, a, it was due to kids not being able to keep their head and keep their composure during times when we really needed the most. Uh, how do you plan on cleaning that up? Um, over the season, not letting them play. <laughs> that that's that's a way to do that, yeah. so they can understand. Like, you can, if you're not gonna focus, you're not gonna play. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Um, the the offense struggled this week. Yeah. Um, but were there any positives that you saw coming out of the game? Well, you you know you always want to try to find some positives, uh, even in a game like like we had where we didn't we didn't throw the ball particularly well, we didn't run the ball particularly well. But you know, when we when we start digging down in films, we always want to come up with some positive. So we we did find some positive, but uh, it was more negative than positive when it comes down to the offense. Um, do, what do you need to focus on to improve on this coming week against Benedict? Well, we just need to go back to our basics. Um, we just need to run the ball like we always uh, like we like we planned it to do, and it'll help us throw the ball better. Uh, when we can run the ball, it's, it's easier to throw. Right. So uh, we'll just go back to basics and, and, and kind of figure out what we did wrong and, and what we need to do to correct it to make it right. Uh, Holiday had 23, year, 23 yards rushing. Right. Um, how do you plan on opening things up this week in order to free up the running game? Uh, well, like I said, I, I just answered that question. We, we, we're we're going to go back to the drawing board. We're going to figure out what we did wrong. We're going to try to make all the necessary corrections that we need to make in order to have a better offensive uh, performance this week. Okay. Um, we're going to be right back with more with Coach Derek Barrows um, about this upcoming week against Benedict College.
lights, camera, action. The Mass Communication Department needs help. All students are welcome to help out with the production of the Coach Burroughs show every Monday. Any help would be appreciated. Welcome back to the Coach Derek Burroughs show. Um, you guys played Benedict College this week. Mm -hmm. um, how do you plan to regroup and going into this game after, for another long road trip? Uh, what do we plan to do to regroup? Um, go back to basics again. <laughs> uh, we'll go back to basics and uh, we'll figure out all the things we did wrong and, and uh, you know, even work on those things a little bit harder. We'll work on our passing game a little bit harder. We'll, we'll improve our running game and clean up a lot of things that, uh, that, uh, that uh, we, we uh, made mistakes in with the Morehouse game. And, and hopefully that will uh, get us back on track. Um, you guys both come in come into the game one and one um, mm -hmm. off disappointing losses. Mm -hmm. uh, does this change the focus for either team, or do you approach it like any other game? Uh, they their record wouldn't have any effect on the way we would pro approach a football game. Um, um, they're a good football team, and they're they're a big football team. So, um, and and they do a lot of things well. So, we we just got to get together as staff and figure out what we need to do to get back on track. Um, in the first two in the first two weeks, Benedict has uh, seemed to have trouble with fumbles. They have had three fumbles and lost two of the fumbles. Uh, do you feel that the that to be do you feel that to be significant? And will your defense try to exploit it, exploit that? Exploit. Well, that? all defenses uh, tries to get fumbles. That's not that's not anything abnormal. Uh, we all preach and teach uh, stripping the football, ripping the football away. And uh, and sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. But uh, that's a standard practice on the defensive side of the ball that you preach stripping the football. Um, during the past two games, Benedict's opponents' offenses combined, had a combined for 23 penalties, while Benedict has a total of 15. After watching tape, do you feel that they seem to be pretty disciplined on both sides of the ball? And how do you keep them from playing into their hands? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand the question. Yes. Okay, so uh, during the past two weeks, right. two games, Benedict's off opponents' offenses right. has a combined for 23 pe penalties, mm -hmm. while Benedict has 15. Right. Um, after watching tape, do you feel that they seem to be pretty disciplined on both sides of the ball? And um, do you? How do you not? How do you not play into their hands? Um, I, I, don't, I don't quite know how to answer that question. Uh, uh, we're going to go out and play football, and uh, we're going to try to get our kids to keep more of a level head, to keep down penalties. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure, um, you know what, you know what Benedict penalties would would have anything to do with us. But my job is to make sure that we don't go out and get uh, the stupid penalties and the stupid personal foul penalties that we. We had in our last game to hurt our football team. Right. So, um, you know, I try to I try to coach our football team, and I I, I don't I try to worry less about somebody else's. But um, if they're getting less penalties than the opponents, then uh, that's a good thing for them. But but we'll definitely try to clean up these personal foul penalties. Um, the first week, Benedict relied on their running back, uh, Trini Charleston, mm -hmm. um, who only had two rushing attempts this past Saturday for four-yard loss. Mm -hmm. um, how, do you, how, how are you preparing for their run game? Well, we, uh, we're, on, we're, we're watching film. We're, we're trying to figure out the best possible positions we can put our players in to be successful. Uh, he's, a, he's a good running back, and uh, he's a make-you-miss uh, kind of kid. Uh, so it's not just him. He, they have a whole slew of guys back there that can run the football. So, uh, so we got our hands full. Defense have our hands full. We, we, got, a, we got a job to do. Um, this week, this week, Benedict's quarterback ran for 79 yards and threw for 92. Will the possibility of playing a running quarterback cause you to make any defensive adjustments? We make them all the time. Um, I thought uh, Morehouse quarterback was a, a guy that could run it and throw it, and uh, Benedict quarterback is the same. Every week we face a quarterback in the SIAC. He's a runner and a thrower. Uh, he's athletic. Uh, so it's, it's not anything uh, unusual for us to face these kind of quarterbacks every week. So um, we, just, we just game plan it within the game plan. 
Uh, Benedict gave up 329 yards of total offense last week. Um, 233 was in the passing game. Um, have you seen something in our defense that you feel that you can exploit? Uh, no. Um, we're just going to go out and, and uh, get put the, the best game plan that we can for Lane College and hope that's enough to be successful and get back on track. Um, last week, Benedict only gave up 96 yards rushing on 44 attempts. Um, as a predominantly running team, the first two games, how do you plan to approach the game offensively? Uh, the plan is to get back on track running the football. Um, and as we, uh, as our running game goes, so does our passing game. So uh, it's, it's always the mindset that we want to run the football. And uh, so... Uh, We'll work, we'll work even harder to try to get back on track this week. Um, they have forced three fumbles in their first two games and recovered. They have forced three fumbles in their first two games and recovered all of them. Um, does this concern you um, after the three fumbles in the first game? And are you focusing on ball protection? Uh, we always focus on ball protection. And um, so... Um, I mean, I, I think the fact that they forced three fumbles in two games, I think that's great. Uh, but we always focus on ball protection and, and making sure we hold on to the football. And just as the defense practice strip drills, offense practice uh, how, to, how to hold the football, making sure they hold it high and tight. So uh, it's built in our practice every day. And we'll be right back with the coach Derek Barrow. So. Why are you doing all this speeding? What time you gotta be there, huh? You ain't James Bond. You ain't some GTA character. You are not on Fast and Furious, okay? This is real life and you are a normal pedestrian. Look at a speed sign, all right? Turn off that radio. Pay attention so you don't end up killing somebody like this fool almost did to me. This message is sponsored by Lane College. The power of potential. And remember, drive carefully. Welcome back to the Coach Derek Barrow Show. Um, last week, we introduced a new segment um, for the audience to ask you questions. Mm -hmm. um, and we have some more questions this week. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact us at uh, broadcast at langcollege.edu or, or any of our social media outlets, um, Facebook at Lane College Athletics and Instagram at Lane Athletics. Um, Sherry wants to know, uh, you managed to avoid two hurricanes and travel and travel during the first two games. How does the, the weather affect um, how you approach the game and your travel? No, well, that, that uh, well, from a, from a defensive point of view, uh, I love rain. You know, I love bad weather games. But right. from an offensive point of view, I, I, I absolutely hate them. So we <laughs> always want to, we always, uh, you know, as you're a de if you're a defensive player, you always pray for those bad weather games because you know nobody can't hold on to the football. But you got to remember your own team is playing in that also. So it's kind of a bittersweet, good, bad, <laughs> you know. So you, right. you, you don't know whether to root for bad weather games or, you know, because the offense got to play on the same, in the same type weather. So it's kind of bittersweet. Uh, Gordon asks, when, when, when you have long road trips, how much does the amount of travel affect your players and coaching staff? Uh, do you change anything when it comes to your pregame approach? No, actually, um, actually, I think we play better away than we do at home uh, because at home um, uh, we don't go to hotels like the bigger schools. So uh, night before games, I'm not really sure where all our players are. On the road, I know where all our players are. They're, they're in curfew at 10 o'clock. At 10.30, they're in their, their, their rooms. So we have a better hold and a grasp on our players when they're out of town opposed to when they're, when they're at home. Um, Gerard asks, when are you recruiting? When, when you are recruiting, what do you look for in a player? Well, we look for size. We look for speed. Um, we always like football IQ, which you can't tell on film. But... Uh, it's just when you when you've been doing it for so long mm -hmm. and you see what you what you like or you see what you're looking for, you just kind of know it. But we look for size, we look for speed, we look for football IQ, and and those little intangibles that help make good football players. 
Uh, Alex asks, during the during the season, how do you find personal time? Uh, when are you consistent? When when you are consistent in preparing for games from week to I don't, week? I don't have personal time. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, I don't have personal time. <laughs> It's all football. No, all football. <laughs> uh, Noah, Noah wants to know, what is it about coaching young people that you find enjoyable? Uh, because I'm still playing. It, it allows me to play football, uh, but not physically. You know, I love, I love the game. I have a passion for the game. And my passion, uh, even though I've long, my days have long passed playing, uh, but my passion still burns like I'm still playing. So when I'm out there coaching, you know, it's like I'm almost still playing. So... It's the passion that I have for the game. It's the love I have for the kids and the game. Uh, Brody asks, what are your expectations for players on and off the field? I want all of us to graduate. You know, I expect if you come here and you stay here four or five years, I want, I want a graduation. Uh, I want you to graduate. Uh, we have a, I think we have a, a, a great graduation right here amongst our student athletes, and I want to keep that going. So, right. um, so I expect you to graduate. Uh, I expect you to go to class, and I, I expect you to be re very respectful of the people here on campus. Uh, Will wants to know, you talked about not bringing students in with the expectations on going to the NFL, but to get a degree. Um, what kind of academic standards do you hold your players to in order to see that they graduate? Well, we're going to hold, hold them by whatever the college academic requirements are right. and the NCAA requirements are. Um, like I said, we have a 78% graduation rate amongst our student athletes here at Lane, which is very, very high. So, uh, but we're going to hold them to all the academic standards that the college uh, requires and the NCAA requires. Uh, Scarlett asks, uh, aside from being on the field coaching, uh, what do you enjoy about your job? Uh, aside from coaching? Aside from coaching. Um, what I enjoy about it? Um, Actually, I kind of like traveling, you know, that's, that's always been fun. Uh, actually, I kind of enjoy those long bus rides. Uh, it really kind of gives me the opportunity to, to think and, and uh, relax just for a minute. So actually, I enjoy those, those long bus rides. Yeah, how long was that bus ride to Texas? Texas, it was about seven and a half, eight hours, but the one we got coming up is 13, so I got a lot of Got a lot of, th well, not 13, I think it's 11 or 12, but I got a lot of thinking to do while we were riding this. Jada asks, what is, what, is, what is a typical week like during the season? 14, 15 hours a day. Uh, um, normally we get up in the morning, we meet at 8 o'clock every morning. Uh, seven days a week, we probably get home around 10, 11 at night. Uh, so a typical season is 14 hours a day, seven <laughs> days a week. Man. Uh, Kaylin asks, do you approach each game, each game the same no. when you go through your preparation? Well, the, well, I approach each game the same, but the game plan is different for every team. So do I do the same? I, my approach is yes, to answer your question. Yes, I approach the game the same, but the game plan is never the same every week. Um, Gabriel asks, do you rely heavily on your coaching staff to make sure the team is prepared week to week? Well, that's, yeah. And that's why you hire people that you trust and you believe they can get the job done so you don't have to stand over them to make sure that they're getting, you know, that's, that's, not, that's not the kind of coach I am. You hire people, you trust them that they're going to get their, you know, get the job done and do their jobs. So, uh, so you don't have to be that kind of head coach. You don't have to be that kind of boss. So. Um, Kay asks, off the field, what kind of expectations do you hold, do you have for your coaching staff? For my, for my coaching staff, just, you know, to make sure that they're very, very respectful to the people here on campus. We're a small community. Everybody knows everybody. So just, you know, just be very respectful uh, to the people here on campus. Be very respectful uh, to people in the community and represent Lane well. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you have any more questions, you can contact us at all our social media outlets. Um, my name is Justin Robinson, and this is Coach Derek Burrows, and I'll holler at you.